Okay, so welcome everyone to this series that I'm doing on production walkthroughs. Each video is going to have a different song or different genre so I can explain different concepts of mixing and producing. I'm going to hope to go over pretty much everything in the song going from percussion, bass, lead instruments to effects and other things. So let's get started off with this song. Right now it's called Minute. Um, I'm not sure if it's done. It's a song I've been working on for a little while. I go back and forth with it every now and then. I'll go back and change something. Recently I got um, a mini brute and some modular synth, so I changed at the bass line and um, along with some other recordings and other songs. So let's start this off with, I guess, just percussion. So this is the intro right here. It consists of, uh, let's see, just this drum. I think it's a Vengeance drum. Recently I've been straying away from Vengeance just um, to get more of a unique sound. I hear a lot of Vengeance kits being used. Uh, I know Reddit has a lot of good sample packs in under like EDM production or some other uh, subreddits. They gave away some pretty good samples and I've been using those lately. But uh, a lot of Vengeance stuff you don't have to compress because it's already compressed. Uh, I used to, um, but now I've been kind of straying away from it because I think it sounds good without it. I had this other kick here too. Um, this was just for that high-end little click sound. It just sounds really punchy if you turn it up and mix it in with other kicks. Uh, I decided to take that out because I didn't think it needed it. I thought it was punchy enough uh, for this song. Let's see, I also have this. It looks to be a loop that I just cut out some information from. Let's see what the whole thing sounds like. All right. I couldn't tell you some of my decision making for some of this because I started this such a long time ago and I guess I just decided to leave that in there, especially because it sounds good just for the intro, even, even if it's not anywhere else in the song. Let's hear this another loop, just to be a snare, and that's throughout the song. Let's see, I only wanted a really small part of it, just the snares playing. And if you look in, you'll see that the intro, like the the startup and end of the clip that I wanted is faded. You don't want just an abrupt start and finish. Pro tip for you. All right, so let's move on. Usually other tracks I'll add compression or some other effects, but for this song I guess I decided not to. <laughs> The bass comes in. This is uh, something I recorded from the Mini Brute, as I said. I have a gate on it because I feel like I, I didn't feel like re recording it, uh, but I felt the notes were a little too long. The gate just makes it more uh, of an abrupt ending. I guess that's kind of what I wanted. Let me find the original. I feel like this was the original. Yeah. And that's just some signs and hmm, some signs and some saw waves. Notice I put a low pass filter on here because I didn't want all of the other information coming through. Oh, let's uh, I'm going to just leave that off because that's the old bass. I think I like the mini brute better because it sounded it sounded warmer. It sounded less programmed and less like all of my other bass lines. I tend to use sine waves and stuff a lot uh, as I separate the low end of my bass lines. 
I'll get into more of that later. Something else I've been doing lately. Let me find it. Yeah, I've been adding our base to a lot of things. Because I really feel like it beefs up the low end. Let me grab... Let me grab a spectrum as well. Well. Alright, so the low end, about 59 hertz. So let's set this to 59. That sounds a lot better, but for now I'll leave, well, <laughs> debating whether I should leave it on or off for this tutorial. I'll leave it off for now. I can always tweak it later when I'm not recording. But that's a cool tip too. I've been doing that a lot for my newer stuff. And then I have a sidechain compressor. Um, something I want to point out here is it's on peak because I'm j I just want to turn it down when the kick happens. Uh, RMS is more of a groovy thing, I feel. Like, it has more of, way more of a groove to it than... Let me see if I can just demonstrate. Like, peak is more to the point, I feel. Like, it just turned, like, I just want to have it down when the kick happens. Speaking of which, I have uh, an invisible kick up here, which I just have muted. So it's muted, you'll never hear it, but I color it different colors, uh, just so I know uh, every 32 beats, I can mark it in my head every time I want to have something change. Like you'll notice there's a big change here for uh, 64 beats. It just helps me stay organized, but my scroll wheel is not working. But anyway, I have that muted, and I have it EQ'd. Usually I have it something like this. Let me turn up the gain, because I'm... The threshold is being automated, so I can't turn out the threshold, so I'll turn it again. It does the same thing. Anyway, so for the rest of the bass line, I like to separate my stuff out a lot. So let's look at this. First off, it's panned to the left. This other part is panned to the right. Let me see, I just have a guitar rig on it. Um, let me take all the effects off. Yeah. So, some saw waves, sine waves, saw waves, and some white noise. That's the majority of the sound right there. A guitar is not <laughs> well okay I guess that's uh, a little while ago a lot of my plugins and stuff messed up I guess that's just something that happened when everything fucked up so oops I guess guitar is not really doing anything all right let's move on to this other part don't tell me guitar is still not okay this guitar is doing something See, I, I feel like this was just a preset, like I scrolled through a whole lot of them, maybe tweaked it a little bit to take off, yeah, I took off some of the bass. 
but I really like that. I really like that effect. Let's put this back in here. Let me see. I got some reverb on it too. Hmm. There really should be a high pass filter on all of your reverbs. Remember that. Okay, so let's go over how I made the lead elements right now. Uh, they're layered. Let's see, I'll play these right here. And you notice uh, one's in one ear and one's in the other ear. It's later layered here. That's the same note. Uh, there, it, it's the same melody, uh, just different. I think I tuned some stuff slightly different, and uh, it's also panned left and right. So all of these are using silent uh, and a saturator and an EQ. Pretty much all the same. Um, they're all uh, saw waves. Um, let me see. I have it, I have the envelope set up a certain way so that when when you turn the cutoff down, it uses that effect to make more of a plucky synth, which you can see I use down here. Just added that compressor. I didn't do anything with it though. But you see, uh, these side chains are RMS because it's more of a groovy feel than like a on point feel. Let me kind of kind of make it extreme and show you. It's hard to really tell what I mean. It makes sense to me if it doesn't make sense to everybody else. If it doesn't make sense, leave a comment and I'll, uh, I'll explain it in better detail with better examples. Let me see, this is also made with silent. These all just the same thing. I never really looked and thought about what all these were made out of. Yeah. So just two saw waves, uh, slightly detuned, uh, and a lot of it it has to do with the cutoff envelope. Like if this is if this wasn't set up the way it was, it wouldn't sound the way it does. 